Hello everyone, welcome to Dynamics and Control Lab. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you how a single degree of freedom system uh, works once we do have actually force excitation and once we do have free vibration. So, in this experimental testing, we've got a single mass uh, and uh, actually attached uh, to, to the system using uh, actually some uh, spring and we do also have a kind of uh, damping that we can tune it so we can excite uh, actually free and force vibration with and without damping in the system so this is our rig and this is our oscilloscope that we use for collecting the signals so I'll leave the rest to my esteemed colleague Stefano to present the uh, actually the rig to you thank you hello everyone so this rig is called Cousin's rig and as Hamad said it is a single degree of freedom uh, which means we have an inde one independent mass moving. Uh, the mass is connected to a spring, and the spring is connected to a frame. If the frame is still, uh, that means uh, that basically it translates into the mass being connected through the spring to ground. Uh, the frame can also move, and in that case, we are exciting our system to given uh, um, uh, frequencies. The mass is also going, uh, the friction between the mass and the frame is uh, lower to nearly zero thanks to air bearings, and we have uh, uh, these two coils that um, use eddy currents to introduce damping. The whole system is connected to an oscilloscope, so we can see uh, the movements of the mass. First of all. If we give a random displacement to the system, the system is gonna naturally vibrate at its natural frequency. If we look at the oscilloscope here, the oscilloscope is giving all, us also a measure of the frequency for this system is around 1.8 hertz. That's its natural frequency. And theoretically, the system is gonna vibrate forever. But this is just theoretically. That happens if we have no friction at all, which introduces damping. In our case, it's, it's, we're dealing with a real system, which means there is actual air around the system that is introducing some sort of friction, and that's why the amplitude of the vibration is still going down. Uh, we were talking about damping and how it's affecting our system. In this system we can introduce damping uh, through this handle here and if we check on the oscilloscope I'm gonna give again a random displacement and I am gonna add 0 0.5 amperes of damping here let's see what happens yeah. on the oscilloscope this is going down really quickly and settling down to zero. I'm gonna do this again. Yep. And if we take two consecutive peaks of this plot, and uh, we can calculate the logarithmic decrement, and through that we can also calculate our damping ratio. So let's drive the system. If we want to drive the system to resonance, we are going to drive the system at its natural frequency. We said it was 1.8 Hz, so I'm going up, 0 0.7, 1, 2, 1, 7, too much, and here we are, yeah. So now the system is in resonance, which means it's the frequency, we're driving the system at the frequency where we are going to experience uh, the highest amplitude of vibrations. What happens if we go beyond that? The amplitude is going to be lower than the one on natural frequency. Same thing if we go below that. Uh, again, to reduce those, by those amplitudes, we can add for another mass or we can add some damping let's add 0 0.5 again as you can see we have reduced the amplitude of vibrations here um, 
this uh, is a phenomenon that is used to normally lower the, the vibrations of the system. This is it for the Sun's freak.